Hey, how are you? Probably stressed if you're studying for AZ-104. My name's Tim Warner, and I want to walk you through why I think the exam AZ-104, Microsoft Azure Administrator Associate, exam is the most difficult of all of the Microsoft CERT exams. That has been my experience. I've taken most of the exams at this point, and I strongly feel this way. Let me explain exactly why. First of all, in a nutshell, if you're not sure what exam AZ-104 is, it's a, the exam that's associated with the Microsoft Azure Administrator Associate Certification. And it's, a, in my opinion, very high value credential if you're working with Microsoft Azure to any degree. It's a completely technical cert. It's not like AZ-900, which is intended for technical and even non-technical people who work sometimes in Azure or para-Azure. No, this is you're in the high weeds. The exam tests your ability to implement, manage, and monitor Azure in terms of networking, storage, compute, identity, security, and governance. That's a lot of material. There's no question about it. And in my experience, having taken all versions of the exam, originally the Azure Administrator Associate required two exams. Microsoft busted it down to one exam. And I would estimate approximately 60% of the candidates I see don't pass the first time through. And please understand, it's not you. The exam really is that difficult. But on the other hand, I can tell you, having been a Microsoft specialist for nearly 30 years, including some time as a Microsoft full-timer, I know a lot of the people at MS Learn. They want you to succeed. They don't write these exams in an effort to confuse or trip you up. This is an exceptionally well-designed exam because it's one of their most popular, and in my opinion, it's probably that and the AZ-900 are the highest value Azure certs across the Microsoft portfolio. Now, in summary, how, now in summary, why the exam is so difficult, I'll give you the summary on this slide, then I'll briefly break down each, each pillar. Content, breadth, and depth. Software-defined networking coverage, reading and data analysis exercise, and Azure field experience validation. You might think, Tim, uh, can you speak English, please? <laughs> well, like I said, let's talk in more detail here. First of all, content, breadth, and depth. I find, having been in the CERT game for such a long time, I've done a lot of CERTs for a lot of different vendors. Many IT cert exams are rectangles. In other words, they're much broader than they are deep. Exam AZ-900, for example, Azure Fundamentals, requires that you know a little bit about a lot of Azure Resource Manager. You see what I mean? Now, by contrast, I would define AZ-104 as a square. It's just as deep as it is broad. It's very broad, but it's also very deep. Again, I say this not to scare anybody, but to equip you with the truth as I understand it from my field experience and to give you some assurance and hope that it's not you. It really is that tough. And if you don't get through the exam your first time or your second time, keep on plugging because like I say, and I'm probably sounding like a broken record, this is a high value certification that can do good things for your career. And I always am basically in awe of anybody I meet who's cleared the exam. Second pillar, Azure networking. Software-defined networking, which is the technical term for Azure networking, is a complete career path in itself. I myself was a Cisco specialist many years ago. I went far down the rabbit hole with that tech and with the certifications. I, in fact, I worked for Cisco Press for a period of time and all of that. I love networking, so it comes easy to me but I know it doesn't come easy to many people. Many IT pros, regardless of whether you're ops, DevOps, Dev, security, they're weaker in Ethernet and TCP IP because that subject in itself is so vast and it's complicated and it's very esoteric in places. So what we've got with AZ-104 is having to know Azure Administration and know Azure Resource Manager and Entra ID but also the software-defined networking that is assumed. You need to know the basics of IPv4 subnetting, not like you'll get questions on how to do it, but you'll see 
perhaps data tables that show CIDR, or Common Internet Domain Routing Addresses, for VMs on subnets, and it's assumed that you're fluent in that language. And if you're not, that's going to present a problem on exam day. Now, I will say that Microsoft has reduced slightly the emphasis on networking on AZ-104. That happened when Microsoft published AZ-700, which is the exam for the Azure Network Engineer Associate. I do have that credential as well, and I teach that material. No surprise, I consider AZ-700 to be the second most difficult of all of the Azure certifications that are extant nowadays. Now, what's this about reading and data analysis? To Microsoft's credit, they've put a lot of juice into localizing AZ-104. As you can see, English, simplified Chinese, Korean, Japanese, French, Spanish, German, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, traditional Chinese, and Italian. For some of the lesser popular exams, there's just maybe English and Japanese. So the fact that AZ-104 has been localized into so many global languages is an indicator of the exam's importance and its popularity. That having been said, this is not a CompTIA type exam. You're going to have multiple interactive item types, including case studies that involve lots and lots and whole bunches of data tables. You'll see source code of various stripes, whether it's Kusto Query Language or Azure PowerShell or Azure CLI. You'll see interface screenshots and Azure architecture diagrams. This isn't to trip you up, but it's instead to validate your field experience with Azure. It's to separate the so-called paper tigers that don't yet have the experience. Now, I understand that presents a boundary for people who are moving into Azure as a specialization because there's the chicken and egg. The exam assumes I have this field experience, but I need the exam and the cert so I can qualify for a job to get the experience. And to that, I can only say, rely on your professional networking because you need to find a company or a business that's willing to take a chance on you, take you on board so that you can get over your learning curve and build that initial corpus of field experience to where doing all of this hardcore data analysis can be easier. Now, that having been said, you could accuse Microsoft of having AZ-104 be a semi-reading exercise and if you're taking the exam in a non-native or non-fluent language, that's going to present a significant barrier to you. There's no question about it. So I'm coming down to this final pillar here, where AZ-104, much more so in, in terms of many IT cert exams that I've seen in my journey, does a good job of validating your real skills with Azure. For example, the AZ-104 questions will validate your real-world judgment. For example, can you pick the right solution when multiple options technically work? It won't necessarily be A, B, C, D, where A is the reasonable choice and the other ones are invalid. Oftentimes, there'll be multiple plausible approaches or solutions to a given problem, and you need to rely upon your skills and analysis capabilities to answer that question correctly. Another category here is constraint navigation. Can you apply Microsoft best practices within budget, security, and compliance limits? Now here we get a little bit controversial. I often tell people, don't read too much into the exam items. You have to read every word because every word counts. But if it comes down to you questioning, uh, well, I know the Microsoft answer to this question, but my field experience, I have edge cases where blah, 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 Microsoft exams don't care about your edge cases. You're going to need to be proficient in the Microsoft messaging here. I mean, let's face it, to Microsoft's point, this is a vendor-specific exam. So you need to be proficient in their language, like I said. But beyond that, unless you have some at least hard practice in applying Microsoft best practices to problems and solutions in Azure, Again, you could be faced with a chicken and an egg situation. Now, Microsoft might say, well, you should be going down to the fundamentals level, and that's actually a good suggestion. The Azure Administrator Associate doesn't have a formal prerequisite, but it absolutely assumes that you've got at least AZ-900 Azure fundamental skills. I would say more. 
but that needs to be your rock bottom baseline. And there's no shame in you going back and qualifying in that skill set and maybe even picking up that certification because I found that the Azure Fundamentals cert is super valuable in the marketplace as well. Then lastly, troubleshooting instinct. When something breaks, can you diagnose the problem? Given limited info, given that you're only going to go on what's in the case study, what's explicitly on your screen, and you want to be careful about reading in stuff from your personal experience, you want to think about this from Microsoft's perspective, that they're designing these questions based on their guidance in the MS Learn docs, which are often informed by their real world practice, given their Microsoft's own fleet of cloud solution architects. And then there's the larger Microsoft partner framework and so forth. All right. So finishing this out, tips and tricks. Number one, visit the Pearson View Mind Hub store. If there's any exam that needs this bundle, it's AZ 104. They have a bundle where you can buy a voucher, an exam replay, and a 30-day measure up. Now, I'm not getting any affiliate compensation or even notice or recognition from Pearson, from Microsoft, or measure up. I share this stuff because I believe in it and I use it myself. I'll put the links to all this stuff in the description of the YouTube video. But basically, the MindHub store offers a bundle that if you don't pass the exam, they'll send you a second voucher where you can register to take the exam again for free. It'll take your price down to zero. And adding in the 30-day measure up is critical because measure up is going to give you, in my opinion, the most realistic simulation of the actual exam. And I know personally, because I work with measure up, that their items are written, the descriptions particularly, are written to help you skill up in addition to get exam ready. All right, so there's that. What else do we have? You need to get your hands into Azure one way or the other. If you're already fortunate enough to work in Azure in your job, you don't want to do this in your production subscriptions. So you'll want to redeem the Azure free account. If you can get your filthy mitts on an Azure pass, that's good. A tip there is to go to meetup.com and start attending Azure user groups because oftentimes they'll be giving out Azure passes as participation prizes or whatever. If you belong to an organization that's part of the Microsoft Partner Network or if you're in an academic institution or if your IT team has Visual Studio Online subscriptions, you may have Azure credits, particularly monthly credits, that you can redeem. And I strongly recommend you do this because I can't imagine you'll pass AZ-104 without having your hands dirty in the tech. MS Learn has lots of self-based training where some of the exercises historically were attached to a sandbox tenant where you could sign in. But I think due to abuse and cost and the fact that the Microsoft data centers are hosting just about everything now with generative AI, with open AI and Anthropic and their own stuff, I think the sandbox access is heavily limited now in the MS Learn space. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. So there's that. What else? And then, yes, here's a good suggestion. Combine the MS Learn docs, both their conceptual docs as well as their training docs, with your favorite large language model. Doesn't really matter which one. One that supports MCP would be good because MS Docs has an official model context protocol server that you can add in. And you can have the AI quiz you as you go and generate hands-on exercises in labs. It can be really, really useful, not only in studying for AZ-104, but for any IT certification. Well, rock and roll. That is all I have for you today. I hope that this was a high-impact lesson. I look forward to seeing you again. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel a little bit. Later.